Hello party people! Hello! It is Randy for Thunder Horse Descendant. I am here today with project number two. Project number two from the Bargain Bead Box. We have a bracelet going on today. Here's the plan. Okay. Project two, multi-strand bracelet technically. Um, and we are going to utilize the moonstone and the mermaid beads today. So I have those on the mat. So let's just down to the mat and get this part started. Okay, my party peeps, here we are down on the mat. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, today we are going to be making this bracelet. And we are going to do a couple of different things here. We're going to do a stretch bracelet with a leather bail. We're going to create that with some hang dangly down bits. You know, it's our favorite. So here's the beads we're going to be using. Let's take a look at those. We are going to be using these very scrumptious, scrumptious, scrumptious uh, mermaid beads. Scrumptious is my new word. I like it. <laughs> I do like it. Look at those bad boys. Super good. So fun facts, these are the same size, so that's good. <clears throat> these beads here, these are the moonstone. And then we have the little moonstone pendant, one of the flowers, and a leaf. Okay, so that's for our, um, our hanging down business. Now for uh, what some other things we're going to need. Now I'm like, are these the same size? Are you guys the same size? Hmm. I don't know if it's just being, if it's just being funny, or if they're really not the same size. So now, now I gotta look. <laughs> um. Okay. Eight millimeter peach quartz dyed. Okay. So eight millimeter, and then eight millimeter frosted glass synthetic moonstone. So they're both claiming to be eight millimeter. This one, I don't know if it's an optical illusion. It just looks bigger to me, but okay. We'll believe ya. We'll believe ya. So here's some things that we're gonna need for this project today. Um, I'm going to be using stretch magic cording. Um, this is one millimeter. Now you could use whatever you want. You could use a longa, you could use uh, elastic cording. You could use stretch magic. There's like a whole bunch of things you could use. I'm just going to go ahead and use the stretch magic in the one millimeter. We're going to need a um, couple of head pins here. Okay. And we are going to need this little piece of leather to make our bale. Hopefully this one is big enough. Should be. I'm thinking it'll be fine. Okay, so this is a, uh, a five millimeter leather across ways here. Five millimeters. This is just a little piece of deer skin scrap that I had laying around the house. So I'm going to use that. Um, that's going to be over here. And so we got a couple of things to do. So I'm going to first, I want to make sure that 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23. Okay. 23, they said. So I got the same amount of beads here. Oh, this one's tied on. Okay. So first things first, I think what I will do is I'm going to get my little business ready because I like that kind of thing. 
Um, so these are all wire wrapped up. And then we will create the actual bracelets and then we'll work on the bail part. Okay. So I'm just going to cover this up for the time being. This guy's just going to need a jump ring. This guy is going to need a ball head pin. Yeah. I don't know which way I want to go with this flower. I'm going to have to add something here. Because he needs a little something, but not too much something. Because they don't want to take away from what we've got. So let me look over here real quick like for some little gold something or others. <clears throat> Okay, little gold something or others seem to be in short supply at this point. So, I have uh, some rose gold or and or peach, if you will, a little metal spacer. I grab a couple of those, and then I got these little gold ball things. So I just. I just need a little something here. First of all, because the bead is too big for my ball head pin. So I got to put that little spacer guy down here on the bottom. And I think I'm going to go this way so that the flower is facing the top. You could also do it so it's facing the bottom. That is completely up to you. And then let me see if I can use both of these. Well, not loving that. What about just this one? I mean, it's not like my favorite, but I think it'll be fine. I wouldn't want to put a bicone or anything on there because I feel like that would and that would be also problematic. So I'm just going to go with this. I'm going to wrap it. tail in so he don't jump out by nobody. Seems like not the best wire wrap in the world, but here we are. Okay, so we have a charm. Woo! Woo! Okay. And then we have this guy. Now with this guy, <coughs> instead of using wire to wrap it like I probably normally would, I'm going to try to wrap it with this ball head pin just to give it a little something. And I'm going to try to not break it in the process. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it on there. I'm going to leave like an inch of space. I'm going to bend this up 90 degrees, basically, so it looks like an L. Okay. I'm just doing that because I don't want to break the glass. So, the ball is in the front of the leaf. We have an, a backwards L. I'm going to push that back to where it curves. I'm going to leave a little bit of space so it can move and I'm going to bend this part up again. So now we have a J. We have a J that has got it moving enough room to move here. Right? So these are the reason why is these pins are really kind of stiff and if you put it in there and then try to you know mess with it you could crack the hole on the bead. This is what it'll look like from the front. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 
excess ball part and I'm going to use that to wrap around the J. So I'm going to get a hold of the, uh, both sides here and I'm going to kind of push it in a little bit. Okay. And this is by no means supposed to be like a super cute wrap or anything. It's supposed to be like a really organic wrap. Okay, so you might have to bend and bend and snap, you know how it goes. Just so it looks, just so you can at least get it around one time. Um, so there you go. That's what I'm going to do. And if it's, you know, being a problem, you can squish it in if you want. I'm fine with this. And then I'm going to wrap the top. again messy wrap. So I'm going to go wrap around to the bottom and then wrap up to the top and give it a cut. Whoops. Things be flying. Get your goggles on yo. We got things going on here. And then this way he just looks really super kind of organic looking. He's got kind of a large bale to move around on. He's got the little ball up here. Kind of looks cute. You know, instead of just your regular old what have yous. So I like that. In addition, it's going to give this leaf a little more length, and that's what we want because we don't want these to really be all the same length. I might have to add a jump ring on this flower or the pendant, depending on which way it's going to hang. So, anyways, these guys are ready to rock. They just need jump rings. So that's what I'm going to use. And now we're going to create these bracelets. And I've counted out these beads. They claim they're the same size, so it should be the same size. Okay, I'm gonna get some stretch magic cord. I'm gonna get a little more than I'm gonna need. Two pieces. And then with Stretch Magic, you're going to want to pre-stretch the cording. And this is why I say we got more than we need because once we get to pre-stretching, it's going to stretch out. Okay. I'm going to do both of them. And now all we're going to do is string these up. So I'm going to start with the mermaids. And we're going to string up the mermaids. 23 beads I had <clears throat> on my strand. Now it's possible you don't have 23 uh, because 23 is kind of a weird number. So if they split these strands, it's possible somebody might have gotten 22. But if that's the case, you're just going to have to adjust accordingly. And since they're stretchy bracelets, it should be fine. We just basically want them to be the same size as what we're going for here. going to be so pretty. I love mermaid beads. I'm calling them mermaid beads. They're calling them synthetic moonstone beads, but to me, um, those are mermaid beads. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And you know, to be honest with you, I never thought about this peach color. I see these all the time at TF and I always, of course, kind of go for the more vibrant colors, like a blue, a purple, a white even. That's really pretty. Uh, I never really thought about this peach color before, but in this box, it's really working. So I like that. Okay. 
so here we are now this is how I do mine I just stretch them out I kind of get gravity involved you want them to make friends with the string you know get the weight Ooh, I caught him get the weight under control and then how I'm going to do it is I'm going to do the overhand trick so basically you're just going to create almost like a surgeon's knot right here okay so people tend to have problems with stretch bracelets when they do the knot so the trick is is yes you want this to be tight you know like when you pull it out and you're going to make the knot but you don't want it to be so tight that this is that the bracelet is absolutely stretched because if you do it could snap so you want it you want to find that sweet spot right so you're going to go around to make an overhand knot just like this pull your tail through and then just like when we do knotted necklaces we're going to go around again okay Ooh, i only got one of my tails in that one okay so we got that and then what we're going to do is we're going to just roll it down here now when you're rolling it down you want to keep it tight but not so tight that the 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 cording is completely stretched because people are going to stretch it to put this on like so right so you're going to want it to have a little bit of give okay and then once we got that we're just going to secure the knot now there's a couple of things here with this Let me get my high balsam in Cement. Okay, we are going to use GS Hypo Cement. Now, this is important, glue budget. Um, there is a couple things you could do. I'm just, since I'm going to put my leather piece over these knots, like that's where I'm going to put the focal piece of my bracelet, I'm not worried about the knot showing. If you want the knot not to show, there's a couple things you could do. You could use a different cording and you could do a different knot. That Sorry, my battery just died. Uh, you can do a different knot that'll hide it inside the bead to do that you're gonna need to use probably a doubled up um, um, not a longa a longa why is my brain having a, a freeze right now yeah a longa cording like this one because it's small enough to get in there uh, inside the bead Another option would be to put a bead cover over the top of it. As long as you get the bead cover over the top of the knot and you don't push the metal into the the stringing cording, you should be okay. Uh, but like I said, I'm not too terribly worried about any of that because I am just going to use my leather to hide that. Now with this GS Hypo Cement, what you're going to want to do is you're just going to come in here and you're going to drop this little bead of glue onto the knot okay and then you're just gonna let that set a hot second and close that back up so GS hypo cement is important to use because this is a, a cement that never technically all the way dries down um, which makes it flexible which is what you want on a flexible cording stretchy bracelet right you don't want it if you use uh any other type of like super glue or say uh like a uh oh my brain is not working right now where's my coffee <laughs> if you use the loctite glue um it's gonna freeze it this is plastic technically and it's going to freeze it and when it freezes it's going to break immediately kind of like how you put super glue on crystals and they turn that white color yeah you don't want that so we're going to use that okay once we got this on there i'm just going to give this little trim i'm going to cut pretty close and this is what we got okay so while this one's drying i'm going to get the other one going here but yeah since uh, um, since I'm gonna put the leather over the top of those right there I'm not too terribly worried about it I really 
like to make stretch bracelets. I'm not going to lie to you. I love to wear stretch bracelets. It's some of my favorite. Because generally in the morning when I'm picking out stuff to wear, I'm always kind of in a rush. <laughs> my mornings are kind of, they don't have to be rushed. I just, <laughs> I'm always, I always get like, I'm like, oh, okay, Shannon's going to be here in 30 minutes. I got to get myself together. <laughs> But I'm up two hours before that, so I do that to myself. But anyways, but I just like it because I don't know. But the thing with the stretchy bracelet is that, you know, eventually over time it will, you know, probably break because the cord will get old or if you leave it in the sun or if it dries out, you know, whatever. Could, things could happen. Of course, you know, that's going to take some time, but... That's why we've tried to do stretchies with other types of materials, like the elastic cording. Um, I did a whole series of um, African trade bracelets with the um, elastic cording, which I really like, honestly. Okay, I'm making friends here. And then we'll bring these around. And we're going to tie them off the same way as we did the others. <coughs> So, one, two, well, two, bring that down, pull that knot out. When you pull, you gotta pull a little bit this way because when you do that, it's going to uh, lock that knot into place, okay? So there's that. We're going to go with our hypo cement, which is already drying up in the cap. It's on my finger. Get off me. <laughs> okay. Put that little dollop on there. Oh, that's kind of a lot. So, the other thing is when you're using your hypo cement. You don't necessarily want to touch this metal tip to the wire, okay? I mean, you can get away with it, but there's, uh, when you put the metal to this wire, there's an opportunity for it to break it or make it, um, make it less strong, uh, to damage it in some way. So just do the dollop of glue. Just let the dollop fall out. If it's too much, just run it down the cord and then when you cut it off, it won't be a problem. Okay. So there we go. We have our two bracelets. Now this does take, <clears throat> I want to say it's 15 minutes. It's not telling me for some reason. You're going to want to let these dry for at least 15 minutes. I usually let anything with glue like this overnight, okay? But, for the purpose of this video, we are going to move forward with this process. So, I'm just going to move these aside right now. And, I'm going to check to make sure. Yeah. So this little piece of leather here, <coughs> excuse me, it's two and a half inches long, okay, and it's about perfect for going over the top of the two bracelets. So there we have that, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my 1.5 millimeter hole punch, <coughs> and I'm going to punch a hole in this side, in the middle, and I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm just freehanding this, and I'm going to punch another hole, okay? I'm going to take my poker thing, I'm going to poke it through there, just to make sure that the holes are clear, and then on the back there will be a little, little piece of business. We're going to cut off, I don't know if you can see it. Probably cannot. It's where I've poked through the leather. And we're just going to cut off that little piece. That's the piece that I poked through. And we're going to do that on both sides. Okay. And now 
we're going to bring in our little doodads. we got to get some jump rings here. <sighs> okay, let's see. How do I want to go about this? Do I want to use a round jump ring? Do I want to use a larger oval jump ring? All the decisions. It looks like I do not have any large round oval jump rings down here, so we are going to look at using an 8 millimeter round. Now, it is possible that I might want to take some ovals, some smaller ovals, to give these length, depending on which way I want them to hang. So I am going to get a few of those out here. But I'm kind of thinking what I'm going to like to do is I'm going to want to attach all of these to this round. So I'm going to bring my bracelets in. They still are a little bit wet. It's fine. I'm going to, I'm going to focus here on where the knots are, right? I'm going to line those up, take my leather piece and make sure the, the side I want out is out and I'm going to wrap this round. here like so and I'm going to go through these holes we've made and I'll try it I don't know if it's going to work but I'll try it to see if I like it I'm just going to put on all three charms We're going to see where we're at. Okay, my bale is a bit larger than I would like. I could back up a smidge here. Do I want that tight like that? I don't know if I do. Let me put it on. Huh. I gotta make it a little smaller. It's drooping down too much. <clears throat> okay, and well, so that part we can fix. Now I am, uh, I do like how these are just all laying together. Uh, no extra jump rings needed. I do like how they're laying. Um, I do have the leaf over top. I don't mind that at all because it's kind of supposed to be just a little cluster. So this is fine. I just got to make this a little shorter. Now I am noticing that unless I want to make this super tight to where these knots are, um, you are going to see the knot now again you can leave it like that if you don't care um, you could use a a larger bead cover um, I quite honestly I don't really care about it and I also don't have any large bead covers so there's that <laughs> um, but I am going to back this up a little bit and honestly, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it off of there. I'm just going to back it up to, let's say, right here. Okay. And I'm just going to redo the process. So I'm just going to make a hole. Flip it, cut the little nubby off, and then I'm just going to open it. <clears throat> Remember not to panic. We're not panickers. It's fine. And I'm going to take off this little piece that I had on there. Woo! Well, <laughs> and I went and dropped it all. Okay. 
We'll loop it back around. We'll get that jump ring through there. Okay. okay, yeah, that's a lot better. I like that. Uh -huh. Oh, I like it so much. It's so cute. <laughs> yeah, so I don't really foresee it saying right where, you know, over the top of the knot. But again, that's up to you. You could very well put some covers on there or whatever. Use a different type of, <clears throat> of stringing cord or whatever you want to do. Uh, nobody's gonna, in my personal opinion, nobody's gonna care about that, but but probably me, and I don't care. So <laughs> here we are. I really like this. This is n I really like this a lot. It's cute. Okay, so here is the finished product versus the design. I think it turned out pretty much exactly the way that we thought it was going to. And I do really like the colors. I think what is helping the colors is the green pop down here. I think that that is really, let me zoom out. I'll try it on for you. I think that is really doing something for it as far as the colorway. Um, so I'm just gonna put them on. There we go. Ow, he's so cute. Let me see if I can get it to hang to the top. Just twist it. So you guys can see. Yeah. I love that little leaf. I liked the shape of those leaves when they came in. Because they're kind of like, I don't know, they're like bigger and kind of chunkier and square. And I really like them a lot. That's so cute. Um, and I like how we did it with this, just with the ball head pin. It gives it like a really super organic look. And so there we go. That's cute. I, it, this is a hard angle to, sh to show you guys. Uh, but... I'll put it down like this. But yeah, I think it's cute. And then the leather, because we did tighten it up and the leather is kind of a textured, it is keeping it in place when it's on, especially if you have a bigger wrist. Now my wrist is six and a fourth, so it is smaller. Um, but since you have the stretchy, you know, you, you know, you can obviously, you can go a little further. Um, but it might keep it in place almost better on a larger wrist too because it does have still the back of the leather like texture which is kind of almost sticking to the beads and kind of keeping it in place which is nice and got the cute little moonstone on there oh my gosh um, I might have to keep it I might have to keep it you guys <laughs> so cute oh I wish they would have sent some more of those mermaid beads I would have made too <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, I hope you are enjoying these videos. If you are, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Make a comment. Leave it down in the comments what you think about this. Did you like this idea? Do you love these leaves? What's going on? How are things? What's going on with you? Um, let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you let me know that you like this type of content, I will continue to make this type of content. Uh, that's kind of how I judge it. So, you know, please make a comment. Uh, any interaction you can do with the channel is really good for me, and I appreciate that very much. Um, I would love to also see what you guys are making with your bargain bead box over in our Facebook group. Um, you're just going to use hashtag what's on my mat today. You'll see it throughout the group probably. Um, even if you've never chimed in in the group, don't be afraid. We're nice here. It's fine. <laughs> we would love to see what you are making. Even if it's not this, whatever you're making, we would love to see. I hope you guys are having a lovely, spectacular, amazing day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.